Hi, this is Asin. You are now watching Asin Excel TV. Today, we would like to share how to create loop in Excel. In this video, I'm going to share six methods of creating loop by using the example of printing a value of 1 for the cells in the range N1 up to N5. Let's go to the developer tab and click on Visual Basic. I'm going to use the current sheet that is sheet 1. So let's double click. As you should always start by giving giving a name. The first method I'm going to share is the for next method. We can use a for loop together with the dummy be set equal to the initial value that is 1 to represent the first row and up to the last row that we need. For this case, I'm going to use 5. Press enter and we can now assign the value of 1 to the cell that we need. We can start with the sheet name that is sheet 1 followed by dot cell house bracket the row index that is going to be run by using the dummy i so we put i here comma the column index instead of finding the number for this column we can type the letter n itself but together with the quotation marks and we can now set equal to the value that we want finish the first i of course we have to proceed to the next and we can now run and obtain the output that we need for the second method instead of running a for loop with a that means that be equal to the value that we need. We can run through the cell in the selected range. We just have to make use of the for each method. Let's create a dummy. It can be any word or any letter. I'm going to use cell here and let Excel know where is the range. For this case, it's in the range starting from N1 up to N5. Type together with the quotation marks. And we can now set the cell be equal to 1. However, when we click on run, as we can see, nothing happened. This is because we are assigning the value 1 to this cell. So which means that we should use dot value property. Let's run again and we should obtain exactly the same output. Let's proceed to the third method. Instead of using for loop, we can consider do loop. Let's try for do while through. We have to set a condition to ensure that the do loop will run whenever needed. We need all together five rows here. So which means that we can set a dummy that is less than six. And we can now print the value to the cell that we need. We can make use of the range object use the letter n itself but together with the quotation mark and we can join the dummy i by using emphasis and we set equal to one of course we have to update the i whenever the value one is assigned to a cell so we have i is equal to i plus one and we just have to loop it but the problem here is since i is not defined at the beginning which means that i start from zero however what we need here is i start from one so we should initialize the value i be equal to 1. Let's click on run and we should obtain exactly the same result. On the other hand, instead of using do well, we can do until it is false which means that when i is equal to 6, we should stop. Let's click on run and see the result. As we can see, we obtain exactly the same output. Besides, instead of using for or do loop, we can make use of the go to statement that is the fifth method that I'm going to share. To make go to statement workable, I need a condition. So let's create an if condition. Whenever i is less than 6, then I should print the value for the range bracket also, type the letter N together with the quotation marks and join with the dummy I. And we can set equal to the value that we want, that is 1. Also, update the I value whenever needed. What we have to do next is go back to the condition that we set and check it again. So, I'm going to use a number 1 to represent the line that I'm going to revisit. So, we have to type exactly the same value here. We start with if, of of course, we have to end with if. An issue that we should take note here is since the dummy i is not initialized, which means that it starts from 0. However, we don't have any cell called n0. This will definitely result an error. To overcome this, before the line, we can use the statement on error resume next, which means that when that is an error, this line can be skipped. Let's run it 
and we should obtain exactly the same result. The last method that I'm going to share before we end this video is to revisit the procedure that we have. That is, call back this procedure. So instead of marking the line that we want and revisit the line, we can actually call the procedure. However, when we click on run, as we can see, nothing happened. This is because whenever we revisit a procedure, Excel would treat the dummy as new dummy. In order to ensure that Excel would not treat it as new dummy that never revisit the procedure, we should define the dummy for public use. So we have public i as for this case, sin is integer. So I'm going to define as integer. Now let's run it again. We should obtain exactly the same output as we can see here. Okay, that's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Hope you like this. See you.